Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This has been a wild day, a wild situation, and I keep sitting back here and I keep saying, Lord, I'm running out of things to say. I'm going to have to send somebody else to start to talk, start to teach, start to do things differently. Of course, God keeps giving me more and more as I go along, because it's not about me, it's not about a program. We were at a place one time and there was a very well-known speaker that was there in the area and we figured maybe he'd be speaking and we found out nope they asked but the problem was they said uh, they already had it all figured out you can't figure out what God wants because you never know you get locked up in a box yes there's a lot of teachings a lot of training but when it comes right down to the presence of God I would rather move by God every time I would not say anything other than what the Lord wants to say. So that's what we do. We listen to the Lord. We hear what he says. If somebody has a word that the Lord wants them to put forth, tell me about it. Let me know what it is. Let me pray about it. And more than likely, you'll be sitting up here if, it, if it's definitely anything the Lord wants. We'll work with you, get you up here, and get you speaking. So I don't have enough people have done that much lately, but we... You know, and, and it, sometimes I get something and I sit on it for a while because the Lord says not right now. But the fact is, it's getting things prepared and ready. So, one day I hope I have a list of people wanting to say things and I'll just go to the list and see what the Lord wants to do and might give you an opportunity to pop up and start to speak. See, stepping out and doing things. I, I can guarantee you what, it makes you mad. Well, it used to make me mad. You sit here and you tell people and you explain and you go 20 different ways of saying certain things and somebody comes up here, don't have much experience teaching or anything else and, they, and they're concerned about not anybody liking them and everything else and they sit here and they teach and all of a sudden I hear from the people, wow, wasn't that powerful? And I said, I've been teaching that for 20 years. Why didn't you get it back then? <laughs> it drives me crazy. Or used to. Not anymore. I, I understand it now. I, I've been planting and watering. Somebody else came in and harvested. But we all get the glory. Because <laughs> it's all God. If we're in his presence, it doesn't matter. As long as God gets what God wants. That's what this is about. It's not about church. It's not about coming here to see me or listen to what I got to say. It's coming and seeing God, meeting God, being in God's presence and loving God. That's what this is all about. And when we think about that, and, and it, sometimes it changes our concept. And when you get up in the morning and the alarm clock didn't go off like this morning, and your wife yells at you, it's time to get up. What did I mess up this time for? And I finally got up and I said, okay, this is getting late. So I got up and got cleaned up and then she comes in later and says, what's taking you so long? I says, you got problems? I says, no, everything I touch is falling apart today. That's when you turn around and said, is it really worth it? But when you have a love to God, yes, it, it is all worth it. No matter what the enemy tries to throw your way, it is well worth it. So we thank each and every one for being here, including myself and my wife for waking me up. She always keeps things going, so praise the Lord. We just, we give God glory for today. I didn't really have anything today, again, as I started, and I started to say, Lord, I don't know what to do or say. I ran across this song, and I want to just have it played right now. Before we play it, it's, it's Crystal Gale. I don't get paid by Crystal Gale, but I want to tell you one thing. Uh, just before I, I was going to say this. If you want good music, buy everything you can from Crystal Gale. Charity. Huh? Charity. Who? Charity Gale. Charity Gale. Man, I'm getting the wrong one. <laughs> Charity Gale. I knew I'd probably mess that one up. She is awesome. I mean, I'd seen a testimony. She said, like, I think it was six years old that she just had a, an encounter with God and, and she determined to turn her life over strictly to God. And when she sings, I guarantee you what, 
there's a, a power of God and a love of God. And, and the, there's some songs in there are what I call I song. It's about you. But generally, it's worship. Today, we have a hard time finding true worship. We have a lot of good songs, but they aren't all true worship. And she has such a, a love for God when she sings. It's not the point, you know, of just singing. A lot of people have good songs, and they sing, and they're good singers, and it's fun. But there's not a love for God inside. When you start to, and you just know it when she sings, there's a love for God. Some of the videos we've seen in the past, when she's people in songs, these people are kind of jam dancing and jumping and having a good time, and she's just crying because of the love of God in inside of her. The Devil Ward is the worst thing that ever happened to Christian music. When you take the world and try to put in and, and tell people, well, you get this because you've done such a good job. They destroyed music. They made it into an idol instead of worship. So when I first, I seen the devil words come out and I seen what's going on. I know there's some good singers. I know some people are in there. I'm not saying they're following it, but it's a tendency for the Lord, for the devil to come in and destroy what people are trying to do for the good. So anyway, that's just get off my soapbox here real quick and just thank God for what he's doing. Good. Be still. 
Praise your name, praise your name, praise your name. Worship you, Father. Worship you. You might say, hmm, how did you get a teaching out of a song? Well, as soon as I heard that, I had the name of our sermon, and that is Why We Celebrate. Why We Celebrate. And I said, wow. Echo. That's interesting when she came up with those, that type of song. I don't know if she's a songwriter, but I guarantee you what, whoever is, it's pretty awesome because if you start to think about that, why we celebrate. We celebrate because he moved mountains. He moved mountains. He moved our sin nature out of us and put us God's nature back in us. Wow, that's exciting. He moved a mountain. He moved us from having to live by the law back then, which was physical, into a spiritual relationship with God. He kicked the devil out of heaven, the second heavens, onto this earth, and now we have a legal right to go directly into the throne room of God through the blood of Jesus. It was always the second heaven and the sin nature that caused the devil to have authority from us to be able to be have a relationship with God we've talked about that a lot this year I'm thinking wow that's just the very first word she talked about the very first sentence he says she moved the mountain man that's a big we could pre preach for a year on just that one and they were singing in a song that's awesome so when you realize what you're singing, I'll tell you what, it gets exciting. Right. So it told the winds and waves to be still. Ah, who many, how many people told the winds and the waves, the winds at least, and the rain and the wind and all that stuff to be still this last week? I did. Yeah, there we go. What is it, what, what, why? Because he moved a mountain. He gave us a legal right to do that. Prior to that, without the move of the mountain there, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Think about that. That's powerful. He cast out demons. Whew. That's awesome. When he started to do that. He bid the empty soul be filled. He's saying, everything that you're going through, I have taken care of it, and I can change your life. He doesn't want you to walk without the Spirit anymore. In the Old Testament, they went with a hole in their soul. They walked with a hole in their soul. Many people today are walking with a hole in their soul. Why? Why? Because when Adam sinned, the Spirit of God left. And what did he left? What did he do? He left a hole in the soul. He came down and he filled that hole with the Spirit of God. Now there was breakthrough. And now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. Wow, that's kingdom, authority, and power. That's not religion. That's not, well, I think maybe I can do this. Well, Lord, would you allow me to do No, it's the authority and power that we need to understand. I can do this. I have a legal right. Why the Bible says the decree is means an official order issued by a legal authority. What is the official order? The word of God. What is the legal authority? You. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Well, I just don't know if I can do it because you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus. Too many out there don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. I don't know if my English is correct. It doesn't matter. I'm just putting it out the way I'm hearing it. Think about that. You get the authority. He gave us power and the keys to do the same. I start thinking about 
the word. Acts 1.8, but if ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit, after your soul gets filled with the power of God. Think about that. It comes unto you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Now, I'd heard a man say this a long time ago, a pastor. He says, Jerusalem is your backyard. He says, uh, Judea is outside of your area. You know, like Illinois and Missouri and all those. He says, and Samaria is like across the pond. So you're supposed to be a witness in all those areas. A witness. Are you a witness in all those areas? Think about that. But see, the Lord, when I was saying, ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon me. The Lord would say to you today, because he just said it to me, I want you to ponder on the power. I want you to ponder on the power of the Holy Spirit. This next coming year, ponder on the power. We should be so empowered we should know what we can do through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the song says, he moved mountains. He told the winds and the waves, be still. He cast out demons. He bid empty souls be saved. That's getting people saved. And now there's a breakthrough. And now there's freedom in your name. And he gave us the power to move mountains, to tell the wind and the waves to stop, to cast out demons, to get people saved, and then you're going to have a breakthrough. People need breakthroughs right now because they're not walking in the power that God has given them. When you start to walk in the power, when you get a revelation, this has to be a revelation, a revelation. And many people have been in churches for years and they never received a revelation. Time to receive a revelation, and that is this. That God has given you the power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that went over the dry bones, the same power that when the disciples walked, their shadow fell upon people and they got healed. The same power. This year, next year, is releasing that power. But you can't release it if you don't have a revelation of what you got. And I'm going to tell you the biggest part about the power is love. Yeah. We talk about power. Oh, man, I'm going to go out and beat people up. I'm going to cut the devil down to the ground. I'm going to knock all kinds of things out. I'm going to come against the wind. I'm going to do all these great and magnificent things because I have the power. We got the power. I was over at Pastor Stephanie's and we were talking along and the Holy Ghost hit me. There's a song, I got the power, I got the power, I got the power. You're going down the road, you say, I got the power, I got the power, I got the power. So you go into the courtroom, God, I got the power, I got the power, I got the power. You're going down the road and all of a sudden you go into a, the doctor's office. I got the power. I got the power. I got the power. What does that do? It starts to get you to remember what you got inside you. It's not haughtiness. It's not highness. It's just saying, hey, I got the power. And then all of a sudden you try to use all this. Oof, you're not going to say that to me. I'm not going to let this happen. This is not going. That's the wrong power. That's the devil's power. The true power is, Father, I thank you for your love. I appreciate these people so much. Father, these people are so bound up by your spirit. I just can't stand it. Father, break the strongholds that's over these people so they'll be set free and come out and be able to have a life of victory because that's what it talked about later. That's the power of love power of love will change things. 
Why? You love the things in your house. You love the things around your yard. You love your car. You love those things. You love your family. You might have a dog or a cat. You love them. So what do you do? You speak to that wind and you tell them, don't come. Calm down. In the name of Jesus, just calm down. So it's like the guy that was down in, and I was talking to him in, in uh, Pella one time, a friend of ours. And I said, there were some tornadoes that were coming towards Pella and Oskaloosa when we lived in Oskaloosa. And I said, I bound that thing in the name of Jesus because I was learning these things. You know, and I talked to him, he says, you know, he says, I was down here, and he says, I heard about there's two twin sisters coming towards our our, our, our church, you know, our, our town, Pella. He says, I told them to, to go around. I'm not going to have you come through my town. So he turned around, and he got to, to work, and he was talking to one of his workers, and the worker said, last night... I went outside and I seen these two Swiss twisters coming. Sisters coming. And, you know, the twins, tornado sisters, whatever they call them, they were coming. Two of them. And all of a sudden they stopped and they hovered and they whoop, disappeared. Unusual. No, it wasn't. In the name of Jesus, we have the power to tell them to stop. Reinhardt Bunky, long time ago, I've heard this before. He said he had a tent up, and there was a tornado coming. And he stood out the end of the tent, and he says, If you come through here and destroy my tent, I will build twice as big and get twice as many people saved. It stopped right there. Dead stopped. Never came nigh. Why? Because he had a love for people. We have a love for what we own. We have a love for our area. I do not love picking sticks up. I do not love repairing my house. There's a love that's involved in all of this. Now, your neighbors that you can't stand said, Lord, let them go on the north side of my house and take that old section out. That's not love. <laughs> you get you in trouble. <laughs> it, it'll probably be standing when your house is gone. But the power is love. See, sometimes we don't realize how much love is involved. All you have to realize is this. God so loved the world. He didn't say God so loved man. He didn't say God so loved you. He said he loved the world, the whole thing. What does the world encompass? Everything. He loves it all. He doesn't want any of it to suffer. That's when we have to realize we got that power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. Power. That's just from a song. And then after it did all that, it says, it gave you power. It gave us power to do this. When you start to get that revelation saying, whew, I got kingdom authority here. I understand what I'm doing. Then it goes on to say, and the keys to do the same. To do what's the same? Everything it talked about. Move mountains. To told the wind and waves to be quiet. Cast out demons. Fill the empty souls. Or bid the empty souls to be filled. A breakthrough. Freedom in his name. He gave us the keys to do the same. So let's go let's see what the word lines up with that one. And it says, Matthew 16, 19, And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whosoever shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Those are your keys. What do you use a key for? Put on your table and say, Boy, that's a nice key. Might be a gold key. Might be a gold skeleton key. Big one. Put it in underneath some glass and just, ah. Oh. You know one thing with a key? I go through my drawers once in a while and I'll find a key. And I'm thinking, what's this key for? 
I don't understand what this key is for. What good is a key if you don't understand it? <laughs> Throw it away. It's just taking space. Tired of having it. I don't know what I had it for. I don't even know what it goes to. Doesn't mean anything. But when you turn around and start to see what the key is for, a key does one thing. It opens and it closes. It locks or it unlocks. That's what a key is for. Unless you have a clock key and you have to wind up the key and wind up the clock so it'll run. But there's a key that makes something happen. The key, if you don't have a key to get into the building, you're not getting in the building unless you break in illegally. If you don't have a key for your car, like we locked our keys in the car on a vacation one time, we got out, Debbie had to go to the bathroom bad, she was driving, I got out, didn't think anything about it, she wasn't thinking anything about it, and we just both locked the keys in the car. On our vacation, that's not a nice thing to do, because normally the power changes from love to, ah! <laughs> So you got to realize it's important to have the key, and it doesn't work when it's in the ignition and you're outside, because you can't get in. That's what religion does. It puts the key inside because you don't even know how to use the key. And if you do, you can't even find the key. And you don't have a key to do it to begin with because they have no clue what a key does. What does the key do? The keys to the kingdom does one thing. It binds or it loosens. It does the same thing as a key if you put it in a door. You lock it or you unlock it. This is what the key is. And it said the keys to do the same thing. The keys to move the mountains. The keys to, to take the wind and the waves. The keys to cast out demons. The keys to uh, you know, fill the empty souls. The key to have breakthrough. A key to have freedom in the name of Jesus. That's what the keys are for. And it says... I gave you the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I give you a speak to speak a tongue, speak through the Holy Spirit, through, use your tongue, use your wisdom, use your knowledge, and open these things up or bind them up. That's what this song is about. That's just the very first verse of the song. Whew. You ever had a, a word speak on just a song? <laughs> it kind of surprised me when I started going this way. I said, there's a lot of wisdom in that song. In that song, it's powerful. Why? Because in the name of Jesus, he gave us power. He gave us the keys to do the same thing that he did. So John 20, 21 through 23, and then Jesus, and then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me, even so I send you. And then he had, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit, which is where the disciples became born again. That was my last part of it. This is where the disciples became born again. I use this as a teaching about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because first, the disciples had never been born again. Only Jesus was born again when he was born because he was born of the spirit and not of a sin nature man because he conceived the seed from God. So he was born again at birth, at conception, you might say, because the spirit of God was in him. That's when you receive the spirit of God, when you come born again. Then what happened was, it said, whosoever sin you remit, ye shall remit them uh, remit unto them and those whoever sin you remit they are remitted let's see what is it I messed that one up whosoever sin you remit they are remitted unto them and whosoever sin ye retain they are retained now 
Gave, Jesus gave us the power. And he gave us the keys. Gave us the power and he gave us the keys. The Pharisees asked Jesus, who gave you the right to forgive sin? Who gave us the right to forgive sin? Some people don't even realize. I never do that before in my life. That we have a legal right to forgive sin in people's lives. I couldn't believe that. I'm thinking, wow, this is just too hard. Thurman brought this out very strong one time when he brought this scripture up. It wasn't until they were filled with the Holy Spirit that they had a legal right by the Spirit to do that because the Spirit is to give you wisdom on what's going on. I know Cheryl uh, Scrivener had told me one time where she said she had a, a friend of hers or somebody that she knew and she was standing by this glass. And she was, this gal was in intensive care and she couldn't go in because of what was going on and she was getting close to death. And she says, oh, I just want to go in and talk to her and make sure that she's got her life lined up with the Lord before she died because she didn't want her to die without her being saved. And she said, Lord, I remit her sins. Why? She loved her. The power of God came forth and remitted the sins. Boom, right there. And it wasn't but a few hours or less, she died. And Cheryl was praying, and she says, God, I just wish I could have got to her to talk to her, to turn around and get her to make sure that she was all right so that she went to heaven. And the Lord said, did you not re remit her sins? She says, yes. He says, then her sins were remitted, and she's in heaven whether she gave her life to Christ or not. Oh, that doesn't seem normal. Well, I taught about that a while back. Everything seems so, that's too simple. How to be saved. I, I talked about that being too simple, but the Lord says, I use the simple to confound the wise. You got to get childlike. You got to get simple. That's what the kingdom of God is about. Well, I got to do this. I got to. No, you don't. You just have to understand the truth. You understand your power. You understand your key. You will move mountains. You will affect the winds and the waves. You will cast out demons. You will turn around and have uh, people get saved, and, and the Spirit of God will come into them and, and fill their empty souls. And then there will be breakthroughs in your life, and there will be freedom in Jesus' name. Right there is what you need. To understand the power and the keys. Two things that will change your whole life forever. If you don't understand it, if you don't meditate on it, if you don't take time this in this season going into next year to really get a revelation of the power and the keys. There's a lot of things in the words that will explain what's going on. You will start to see things change even greater in your life in your family, around your house, around your neighborhood. God got me the other day. He says, you haven't been praying for your neighbors lately. I says, okay, Lord. So I started praying for my, my neighbors again. I says, wow, Father, forgive me. See, he loves my neighbors. I might not love my neighbors. He does. So I have to receive his love so I can go out and do what he wants to do. That's what it's about. Getting that love, that power, the love of God is so important in this season. You can see all the chaos going on in the world. Without the love of God, you cannot overcome the chaos. The over chaos will overcome you. Power. Well, you got the power. Now all you have to realize, hey, thank you, Father, for the keys, because I'm going to start using the keys to break things down and change things around. Glory to God. Then you got people's wills. That's a completely different story. If they want to do something, they, they, God gave them a free will to do whatever they want to do. It's stupid people. They're doing the wrong stuff. But you got to love them enough to keep going after them until finally they start to change. If they don't want to change, nothing you can do about it. You can just say, God, they're yours. You change their heart. You're the king. You can change their heart. I can't. If they don't want to change their heart, there's nothing's going to happen in their lives. 
Well, there's too many obstacles. No, they're not. The demon, the devil is a liar. And if the problem is it's so strong in people's lives that the power and the keys aren't working. They have to change that around and get more power in them of love. More power of the Holy Spirit moving in their lives to say, hey, I'm all right. I can do all these things through Christ Jesus. Get to know who you are in Christ and you'll see what's going to happen. Did you realize that you can forgive sin and people will go to heaven because you forgive sin? Did you realize that you can forgive sin and they'll be saved and healed? Huh? What? Maybe not so much saved, but healed. I said that wrongly. Forgive me. But healed. It says... i uh, get this one here right. James 5, 14 and 18. If any among you six, you should call for the elders of the church. Now, I thought elders used to be old men, no hair, big belly. Okay, that's what I thought. I went back and I started to check it out in the Greek, and it means mature. You can have somebody that's 20 years old that could be an elder. If they have the maturity of the Lord, they can be an elder. Doesn't mean you've got to have no hair and a big belly. That was a concept from the physical that I had, but I learned that. So anyway, they shall call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. What when somebody comes forth to ask for prayer? Sometimes you can go to pray for people. I had a man, a pastor one time, I've said it before, but he said he had people over here that got healed. He had people over here that did not get healed. He says, I don't know why they didn't get healed. So he started asking God, God, why did these people not get healed, but these people got healed? And he was going down there and he kept asking him, Lord, I just, I need to know why. And the Lord said one day, did I tell you to pray for these people that got healed? He says, yes, you did. Did I tell you to pray for those people over here that didn't get healed? He says, no, you did not. He says, I knew their heart was ready to receive exactly what you were going to pray for. You prayed, they were ready, boom, I could do it. These people over here, you prayed, and they weren't ready. They just asked you to pray. So when you prayed, you prayed a prayer of agreement that they would be healed. Big difference. Really helped me out a lot. There's a lot of people that don't want to be prayed to be set free to go do the right things. They want to get prayed to be set free so they can go do more evil things. Their heart's not ready. The healing, I asked one time, I said this before too, a man who was teaching did a great job. His hand was all withered, and I says, Lord, on the third day of the meeting, I says, I need to go pray for that guy, get that knee, that hand healed, because that's not good. He's being all healed, you know, all bad, with a bad hand, all swiveled up, and he's teaching in such a good, powerful anointing. I says, it don't work right. So I got up, and I started walking up to go pray for him, and all of a sudden, I heard, what's the purpose? Mm, Stop me in my trap. What's the purpose for praying for people so they get healed? And I didn't hear anything, so I knew I was in trouble, so I went and sat back down for a couple of weeks. I just prayed, Lord, what is the purpose? Why didn't you want me to pray for this man? He says, what is a healing for? I says, uh, so people can be healed and feel better and do good things, and you can be showed that you're doing good. He says, it's so that they will show my glory. A healing is that they will show my glory. If it's not to show my glory, there's a problem. You might disagree with this because I'm hearing in the spirit there might be a disagreement with that. But the fact is God loves us so much he wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be healed. But the fact is if you're going to not glorify God because of it, and we've done this many times, we had a guy that turned around and said we prayed for him and his, 
He, he had some massive heart problems, totally healed. It was a miracle. The guy knew it immediately. He, he just started breathing, started doing, and we told him immediately, he said, you need to tell somebody what God just did for you. And, and it, it did. He finally grabbed a mic at the church we were at, and he started talking about how God just healed him. Not that I said he did anything, but God did. He started to glorify the Lord on everything. So when you get healed, glorify the Lord. Don't become prideful. Don't become, you know, haughty by any means. But just say, Lord, you know, God just healed me. It's just like with Randy up here. He says he's healing these people down there. It's not about Randy. It's about God and what God wants to do for these people. He's showing these people that he loves them and he cares for them. That's what the power is about. The love and the care to make things happen. It's so important to go that way. But then it goes on down in the 15th. And their prayer offered in faith will, have, uh, will heal the sick. And the Lord will make them well. And anyone who has committed sin will be forgiven. Ah, again, sin's forgiven. Why is it so important? 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that they may be healed. What? Huh, 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 huh. How do you get healed? Confess your sins. Sometimes we, we walk around with hidden sins, and the sins affect a lot of things. I had, when we were setting up this class, there was, you know, the, the Gifts of Spirit Ministry Fellowship and talking about you know, our discipleship and and the uh, the people that we were working with or preparing for had actually talked about uh, they have oh uh, it's a spiritual weekend we haven't been able to achieve it as now we might down the road we'll see how God moves but they said what they did was they would have a teaching and they would have people paired up and these people then at the end would then go over into and discuss between each other situations that was taught and in doing so, this one man says he had an issue, and he hadn't really talked to anybody about it, but he felt secure within that situation and within that man, and this is what you've got to be careful with. Don't go telling your sins to everybody because you're going to have a massive problem because somebody's going to blab it off to somebody else. And then before your whole business is going to be known and, and it's going to put shame and guilt on you, and the devil's going to use it to cause all kinds of problems. So be very, very careful how you do that. But the fact is, if you have somebody you trust and know, even tell them, don't tell anybody this. Put it out that way. We got to be that way sometimes because sometimes we just flip it and go on. Like me, I just, I have to be very careful because I just kind of all put it out there. But yet at the same time, I can't do that with everybody else that I talk to. So I got to be careful. And, and I just want to warn you on that as well. Be Find the right person to pray with and confess your sins. Why? Because it says, and when this guy said, I confess my sin to this man. And he prayed over me and I asked for forgiveness. And he says, I was totally cleansed and set free of that sin. See, the confession, to open your heart, to relieve those things, to get rid of them. Sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes that has to happen. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. I know I've had some people who have been around when we are at this other church on a prayer team. And sometimes our line got a little longer than everybody else. It was because when they came, they had results. Why? Because we're, power, we're praying in the power of God. We were listening to God to see what he wanted to say. And when he said it, I, I put out what he wanted. Walking in the gifts. And that's what was happening. Powerful things happened. Thurman always said it. I'm a man of God. If you got your sins forgiven, I'll pray. You're healed. Wow. It worked. Other people don't want that. They want to turn around and just walk in the anointing because the anointing does it. You can get healed by having people who are anointed. 
but sometimes the inner root that has caused because you have to have the word in there to change that issue never gets changed and a lot of times those sicknesses will come back on a person if you don't have that done if you don't understand and walking in those areas that's how sickness can come back so it just depends on the person's heart's desire it says Elijah was a man as we are Oop, Elijah was a man as we are and just think about that one yeah and yet when he prayed earnestly the rain would fall uh, no rain would fall none fell for the next three and a half years then he prayed for rain and down it poured the grass turned green and the crops began to grow again he said, so they're making an example. Elijah was as human as we are. He had the ability to pray as a fervent prayer, and guess what happened? Things happen. So what can you do? Do you believe it? Have you got a full revelation of what you're saying and doing? Except for when you have other people and they have a free will. That's a little different situation. I'm talking about your situation. What you can change. There's a difference on other things that they're not going to change. Because you're dealing with their will. That's a big difference. And a lot of people get hung up on that one. Also in Acts 1.4. And being assembled together with them. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. In other words, Jesus breathed on the disciples and got born again first. Then later he said, don't leave until you go over and receive my promise, which is the Holy Spirit, the baptism, a full immersion of the Holy Spirit. Just when you, give your, when you get born again, the Spirit of God comes in you. It gives you a legal right to, get to forgive sin at that point. To remit sin or to maintain sin. Think about that because it gives you the revelation of the Holy Spirit. If you're walking in the Holy Spirit and understanding it, you can do that. So what do you think what you're doing when you're saying things over people that you shouldn't be saying? You're cursing them because of the authority that you have when you get saved. How many people have been cursed because Christians have, have cursed them? People who really know have been asked Jesus Christ in their life. They're speaking out things that probably are hindering the people from moving the way they need to move. Our tongues need to change in 2022. What we say about people needs to change because we can curse them with our own tongues. Because of the authority that you have through Jesus Christ. I want to think about that. I wasn't thinking about that. The Lord just brought that forth to me while I was saying this. So praise the Lord. You are righteous children of God. Will your prayers get the same effect? If not, what do you have to do? Are you a righteous child of God? Will your prayers get the same effect as they were talking about with Elijah? Yeah. That's what you need to do. I said, if you don't know, please talk to me and we'll work with you to get that point. Because you have a legal right. God is no respecter of persons. He won't do it for Elijah. He won't do it for me. He won't do it just for Randy. He won't do it for anybody else here. Because the fact is, you can do it. He gave us a legal right. Well, there's no one different, no one more important than the other in the eyes of the Lord. And I'll just flip it down here. It, that was the first verse. I mean, that just came out of the first verse. You can about imagine what we do after the next two verses, which I'm not going to. I'm just going to read them. It says in verse 2, you hold redemption. Make accusers drop their stones. I'll tell you what, people come up against you and you, and I've said this before, they have anger, hatred, and bitterness. The first thing you do, you bind that strong man's spirit and demand peace and watch what will happen to them every single time. 
If you're walking in love and have the authority, you're not coming against them. You're just tired of the devil coming against you because it's, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, the anger, the frustration, the hatred behind them, the hurts that's in their hearts that cause them to do what they're doing. If we can't see that, we got a problem because that's what we need to see and how we need to see people. When we start to see it and we start to deal with that issue that God gave us through the power and the keys, you'll see people change. It'll take a while, but God can do it. He gives us the ability to start it. He can finish it and get things going if we start getting into that area. Okay, he shows us mercy. Mercy is the aspect of God's aspect of God's love that causes him to help the miserable. Whew. I love that saying. Just as the grace is the aspect of God loves that moves him to forgive the guilty, those who are miserable may be either because of breaking God's law, they're miserable because they're not doing the right thing, or because of circumstances beyond their control, which we have authority to control or break those circumstances so that they can get in control so that God can work with them and put the love inside them and teach them what they're supposed to have and do what they're supposed to do. That's what this is about. Wow, I could get off and teaching on that one all over the place. I don't have time to do it, so praise God, we won't do it. The, with your mighty... So in other words, it says... You show us mercy with your mighty miracles. With miracles, God is showing us mercy. If you get a healing, if you get miracles, if things are happening in your life, he's showing you because he loves you in such a way. And now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. We, you gave us power and the keys to do the same. He gave us the ability to do all this. We just have to get the revelation and, and not overthink it and try to make it, oh, it's so big, it's so hard, I just can't do it. You're right, you can't. The Holy Spirit in you can. Give him the right to do it. Quit trying to do it. Back off and let the Holy Ghost tell you. That's why the gifts are there. Start to learn and ask and seek what's going on. He'll tell you what to do. He'll show you where to go. And the last one was the chorus is, now we proclaim in Jesus' name, the walls fall down. Anybody remember driving around the city, singing that song, the walls fall down? We're not going to back down or back up. The walls are coming down. We used to sing that all the time. See, we're proclaiming in Jesus' name, the walls are falling down. Strongholds broke in Jesus' name. See, when you walk up to somebody and there's anger and frustration, hatred, things in their hearts that the devil's hooked onto and wants to lash it out on you, it's just like the guy that I said the other night. He, it was a guy was in New York City, and he was driving down in this cab, and these guys were honking and screaming, you know, yelling and fingering him and doing all kinds of stuff, trying to run him off the road, and the guy just kept on driving real nice. You know, he's not a normal cab driver, I guess. And the guy was, was in the cab and says, what, how do you handle all this? He says, I see them as dump trucks, and I ain't taking none of their junk that they're trying to dump on me. If you look at it, they got dumped, they got hurts, got pains. They got demonic spirits pushing them. And, and what happens is they, they, you start seeing and hearing all that stuff. And what's happening is when you do that, they're dumping stuff on you because they're hurt. They don't know how to deal with some of these issues. Some of the stuff they say, they don't even realize they're doing it. It's just because the spirits have caused them so much to do stuff like this. And then what happens is you don't have to take the dump. They don't have to take the trash they're putting on top of you. You have to realize where it came from. It wasn't from that person, which we always see. Easier to see that. It's coming from the devil. It's coming from the hurt. It's coming from the pain. And when you realize that, man, you can change that around and remove that. We are healed in Jesus' name. There's miracle in Jesus' name. To pour it out in Jesus' name, amen. This is what it's all about being a, at Christmas time. Realizing what Jesus has done for us as a child. I'm going to play that song one more time and just end up with that one.
come before you, we thank you. We thank you that we can echo your authority. And through that, we will get the victory. You have given us the power. You've given us the keys. Now, Father, we're asking for full revelation of understanding both. Through the kingdom of God, as you made us royalty, that we might go forth with your love and show the world your love. And allow them to grow and prosper in you. Set those people free who are bound up by religion and bring them into a relationship with you, Father. We're asking this year for a great anointing and power to move through us and to do greater than we've ever done before. And Father, by doing, by echoing your authority, and doing the things that you used to do on this earth, we can do the very same thing, that we will receive the victory to, to achieve and have the life that you want us to be. Now, Father, prepare each person's heart for this season of Christmas and let them not get in the hustle and the bustle and get angry and frustrated. And the other day I was, we were driving there yesterday, we drove up into Ankeny and I says, we're in the middle of it again with all the traffic around. So easy to get out of the love and into the frustration and everything else that goes along with it. So, Father, I ask that you bless each and every one. Keep us all safe. And as we celebrate uh, as you came to this earth, also remember you are no longer in a manger, but you are a king on the throne. And we need to bring presents to you that are acceptable to you in this season. And it's just by our praise and worship and making our lives holy and acceptable for you. In the name of Jesus, we come before you and thank you. Amen.